Coach, we're back. Baseball season is here. In fact, I remember after last season ended, I remember thinking, man, we're going to have to wait all the way till February. Well, February's here and the off season is over. Yeah, it was a, a tough way to end the season too. I mean, we were on such a roll and ran into two good pitchers at the end. Um, but that's baseball. We know we know that's baseball. The, the kind of equalizers on the mound and, and uh, hey, we'll have another chance uh, next week. So been working hard and we're ready to go. Well, and every year certainly has its own uh, uniqueness to it because every, you have a different set of circumstances and new players. This year you're integ integrating almost 20 new players into the mix. Now you do have some production coming back. We can go over that in a second. But overall, how was integrating that many new faces into the program, how did that make the offseason different? Well, it's been a fun fall. I mean, we, have, we do have young guys, uh, I think 17 freshmen and, and four JC transfers. So we, we do have a bunch of new faces. It, it's been, on the coaching side of things, it's been really interesting. We've really had to, to get in there and, and coach and not take anything for granted. In the past, we've had, you know, like a Jackson Clough would be able to work with the infielders and teach the infielders. And I look out there and there's like six freshmen out there that can't really <laughs> teach one another. And so it's been, it's been fun to get in there and really coach and see the growth and development uh, of these freshmen. Uh, and, and we're going to need, you know, 10 or 12 of them to step in, step up this year and help us. So it's going to be fun. Well, and it's a, it's a highly touted class, uh, number 16 in the country. You guys getting a lot of national accolades for the recruiting class. And you and, and Coach Herring and the rest of the coaches that, that handle this have just done a fantastic job. So a lot of talent coming into the program. But as I mentioned, you do have production from last season that comes back. Two of your three outfielders are back. You have position players like Deming, catcher in, in Abe Valdez, who mm -hmm. got some sig significant playing time last year. You lose Jordan Wood from the start from your starters, but the majority of your starting pitching comes back. Back of your bullpen is back. Yep. So you do have a lot coming back. Well, and I, I would say going in, our strength is our, our pitching staff, no doubt about it. Justin Sterner is going to be our opening day starter. Uh, we have Easton Walker, Reed McLaughlin, uh, uh, Drew uh, Zimmerman. Not to mention Cy Nielsen, who yeah. left-hander out of Spanish Fork, kind of sits 92-95 and, and has a three-pitch mix. He'll, he'll start game two for us. Uh, Lesser looks great. Uh, so it, it is. It's a, it's a great mix of, of young and old and experience. But I feel really good about um, kind of where we're at. But the bottom line is, are we, you know, you, you talk about our recruiting class and number 16 and all that stuff, and it doesn't mean a whole lot unless they develop and they progress and they become – what they are on paper on the field, and that's that's the important thing. I think we're ready to play, but you know we're probably going to start four freshmen when we open up against Gonzaga, and when we play New Mexico the next day it might, with Cy Nielsen on the mound, it might be five freshmen. So they're good players, but they they have a little bit of ways to go, and we we say there might be some growing pains, um, but I hope they're only a week week or two, <laughs> not not a month or two. You mentioned Gonzaga, and that's obviously the season opener game. Uh, it is a conference opponent. It is not a conference game. This is a non-conference game against a conference opponent. It's pretty unique to start a season off that way. Yeah, it is. And the way that happened is we we got in. We agreed to to be in this tournament with Oregon State, who is kind of running the tournament down in Surprise, Arizona. And it just so happens that Gonzaga was the other opponent and New Mexico was the other opponent. We play New Mexico uh, four games. <laughs> We're so we going to get them, very familiar yeah, with New Mexico. We play, the, we play them six times in the first three weeks. But uh, it's, it's fine. I mean, you look in pro ball. I mean, they're, they're playing each other, you know, 20 times. It's not really a big deal that time. I would rather not play Gonzaga. Um, I would rather just it, – it's kind of weird playing yeah. a conference opponent in a non-conference game. But um, – I'm sure both of us are going to want to win. <laughs> <laughs> the preseason poll came out on the West Coast Conference. You guys picked to finish second. Uh, you had two all WCC players in Mitch McIntyre and Easton Walker. Just your overall thoughts on, on how, uh, how the conference looks. In our, our, our conference lost a lot of good players. Um, you can read in the, in the press release how many players got drafted. I think it's in the 20s in our, in our league. So we lost a lot, but uh, we do have a bunch of pitching back. Um, Frasso is going to be incredible um, up at, and, and we'll probably see Jacob uh, with Gonzaga on Friday. So I, I think overall the league's probably a little bit top heavy this year, but um, I'm just glad we didn't get voted first because we know what happened <laughs> last time we got voted first, took last. Yeah. And so I, I'm, I'm happy with, with second. I mean, I, I think we got the respect of a lot of the, the coaches in uh, – and honestly, I don't, I don't really look at that. We've talked about that before. I, I really don't look at all that stuff. I'm happy for Mitch and Easton. Um, I'm kind of surprised that Justin Sterner's not. Yeah. He, Justin's going to be dominant in this league and, and this year. 
he developed a, a slider this year on the off, in the off season, and so he comes in with a high riding fastball that, that's going to be 92, 94, and an 83 mile an hour slider. He's going to be really, really good. I, I'd I'd be surprised if he's not on the all conference team at the end of the season. So I feel good about our pitching and and really all aspects right now. Last thing before we wrap things up, heading into the the opening series, the thing you're most excited about with this team, and then your biggest concern heading into the first game. You know. Gosh, it's almost the same thing. Um, I'm excited to see all these young kids go out and play. Um, but that also gives me <laughs> some anxiety and some sleepless nights because you just you don't know how they're going to react. Um, so th that's I'm excited to see Cy Nielsen play. I'm excited to see Carter Smith come out of the pen for us and um, another freshman, Cooper McKeon, freshman. Um, McKay Johnson, who's a 6'6 right-hander from Atlanta, who's you know, running up to 95, come out of the pen. I'm excited to see those young guys. Brock Watkins is going to start at, at shortstop probably for us. Um, Andrew Pintar, who was a walk-on from Spanish Fork, and is going to start at second base for us first game. I'm excited to see what, what those guys do, but I'm also a little bit nervous <laughs> to see what they're going to do. So um, it, it's going to be fun. Well, the wait is almost over. BYU Gonzaga will uh, kick off the 2020 campaign coming up in Surprise, Arizona on uh, on Friday February 14th coach it's almost here I can't wait yeah let's do it let's do it go Cougars